Hey guys. Hey Ben. Hey mom. What? Hey mom. Mm. Not good. It is good. Look at it. Oh, it's fun. That's the best looking tomato I've harvested this year. Listen, we have to lower our standards in our new garden for this year. My tomatoes have been so ugly this year, but Benjamin, you got high standards. Good morning, guys. Sleepy headed boys just waking up. <laughs> I want oatmeal. You want oatmeal? Yeah. All right. Here's my weekend's worth of canning. Looking pretty good there. Here's the little what's left over the harvest I brought in yesterday that I didn't can. Oh, look at this, guys. This is my perfect storm hibiscus. I've been so excited for these blooms. What type of flower did not disappoint. Kali. And down here at the end of my garden bed in front of my house, there is a large rambling pumpkin um, because my children are gardeners and um, when they have seeds, they want to plant them. Pumpkin down in there. Ezra did this. I can't tell you how many times in my kid's life and in my gardening experience, I'll be like, what is this growing in this strange place that I did not plant something? And it can't be a volunteer because, you know, whatever, I've never planted it before. Volunteers, you can usually kind of somewhat know where they came from. Sometimes you get something completely, you know, sown by a bird or something. But um, yeah, I can usually go ask Ezra. Ezra's the one. And look at these. The elephant ears are massive. They're just so huge. We're actually gonna have to thin these out some. I just didn't intend for that to happen, but it's kind of nice, kind of wild. I'm here for it. <laughs> Zucchini squash is supposed to be a barn cat, but does not stay in the barn, so she's over here following me. All right, so I just came up here by the greenhouse. I have a sprinkler on over here. Oh, I need to do something about the weeds in between these. I think I'm going to try boiling water. Somebody said that. Okay. If I could get on top of them. I saw this thing on Pinterest where somebody took like a mosaic of different tiles, like ceramic tiles, all different patterns, and they pressed them down in between the cracks of a flagstone path. And I think I'm going to go to like the habitat place and see if I can find some tiles like that because I was trying to get the creeping thyme and I have some but it's just not taking off and the weeds here are so tenacious maybe like in the winter I could get because thyme will grow in the winter and maybe I could get something through the fall and winter established but right now it's that just the crabgrass and the Bermuda grass are so intense I might end up doing the tile though if I can't get something living in between those when we do more we'll make sure to put better barrier Some. i guess would you say this is the most immediate project yep that and the milk room we're pretty close to finishing that but this is probably a little more important you want to talk about them yeah pretty sure this will be the last version of like the style of beds that i've designed so like they went from like the first cut first cuttings with like wooden posts to what we did at the high tunnel in arkansas which was a very similar version, but if you'll notice, the metal was oriented differently. So we did that the same where we took long sheets and then ripped them down the middle and made and long this pieces. this time we did up and, and down. this time I decided to try it vertically, which has worked out very nicely. It's just been a lot easier to put together. Well, I think one of the bigger details is when you ran them horizontally like this, you would just, you would basically just flatten it off or dead end it into the corner. And then when this piece came in, there was always gaps. And so the yeah. heavy watering or heavy rain, especially all that. The you loose, lost soil. You just lost soil at the corners. And with this, we're basically going to push this into the corner. And then this hat and this hat will catch a piece. And so it'll be a completely seamless. Yeah. Uh, How deep are these? 20 inches. 20. What, what's the next step here? What so are you doing next? We're going to cut. We need to cut some more 20 inch pieces out of. That was the other thing. I went to the metal place and they had a ton, I mean, I had to take a trailer and it was a lot of weight of these kind of just like leftover pieces from different jobs and all that. And since you're cutting them uh, vertically, vertically um, you only need 20 inches per piece. And so I grabbed all of their seconds or their messed up pieces and they was like a dollar a foot versus $3.80 a foot. Yeah. 
and nice like, job man you know i love a good bargain <laughs> so we're still getting good bargains on stuff um and so that way you just cut 20 inch pieces and you can basically use up a lot more scraps than whereas the other one you wanted really long pieces so that way you'd have less seams in case somebody didn't understand that like you know you get these what 16 foot pieces of metal and what we were doing on our old garden beds is we were running them long ways and this way we've just been cutting 20 inch strips and putting them together look here look at the joint yeah see that's the piece behind it and then this piece these are yes. called the hats these little humps yeah well the hats meet up so which that completely seals in all the dirt and stuff yeah. so there's no there's not gonna be any the leaking. only thing here is that this is very sharp but there's going to be a cover on it right like they, i don't know there it was very sharp on the others too you said to be careful but this actually will be the the most complete safest bed because we'll push these corners in put a piece that meets up on these completely sealing off the ends and then we'll run a one by four cap All over way. the top that'll cover this yeah and this is cedar wood that we had milled we found a local miller and bought a lot at once and it was significantly cheaper than going and buying lumber at the hardware store all right as far as getting these beds like in what's the next part of this project um the this this side the ground's fairly level i mean the whole thing's sloping this way which we can't stop that because drainage drainage we have to be able to drain with the right amount of rain we can get here but as far as being really at a level, um, it drops off pretty bad on that far corner. So we're gonna have to bring some dirt in and kind of bring that edge up. And you're gonna do that with the dirt we scraped from the driveway? Yes, it's yeah. back over there. Um, and then we're gonna lay down thick cardboard underneath the beds, walkway, fabric, so that stuff we use on the green, the high tunnels, the black. Yeah, uh, woven ground cover is what it's woven called. Woven ground cover, there you go. Um, that'll be in the walkways and uh, you're wanting to do gravel in the walkways over that i think so i think we've kind of settled there's a see, that white gravel that's kind of yeah out in front of the high tunnels in that it's... front area it looks really nice it's not real sharp gravel so you could walk on it without shoes on since a lot of my family likes to do that <laughs> <laughs> this is one of mine and jeremiah's like greatest marital disputes <laughs> because i believe that being barefoot is good for you <laughs> And Jeremiah, the Marine, is drilled into him big time. I won't so. even wash the dishes without having shoes on. <laughs> I also I mean, I have five boys. There's been a lot of Legos throughout our house. Like, yeah. I've just learned to keep shoes on at all times. Whereas I either don't have shoes on or have some version of barefoot shoes at all times. <laughs> there we go. And who gets more foot injuries? Hey. Yeah, I, also, I asked a question. Answer that But first. if you consider my healthy toes basic <laughs> like, that's good you gotta ask the chiropractor they'll tell you anyway i digress let's talk about garden beds you didn't answer my question <laughs> the answer is guys she gets more foot injuries than me. <laughs> that's the answer everyone knew the answer but i'm just gonna say it it's kind of hard to see with as much growth as we've got so honestly what i may come do is just come in with the skid steer or something and just kind of scrape all this loose dirt and just kind of see what we're dealing with get a better look of the grade and a little like i said it, it's going to slip this way so i'm okay with that but if it's really out of level this way i'll bring i'll bring dirt in and level it out yep and then we'll start laying these out this is obviously just a handful of the beds that are already built they're going to be more built um, and we're getting this side completely done and then in a few months we'll do it over on the other side so the other side of this greenhouse is going to be mirrored to this all right, I need to move this sprinkler. Look how happy everything is in there after it had a drink. Excuse me, bear. Next year we'll have our irrigation done, but we're not there yet. It's all right. Everything doesn't happen in one season. Uh, water in those trees, hit in the back of the bed here y'all every time i find like a little nook or cranny of the garden that i love so much i try to get like a really good picture in it and i took a photo of bear sitting right here because i really like this space last night i'll put it up on the screen it's a great great picture of my faithful buddy so here's my wild and wayward garden um i think i'm going to do one more quick tour out here and then a lot of this stuff is actually getting torn out to get re ready to reset for a fall planting so it's actually kind of like a hard thing i hear people struggle with this and i totally understand why especially new gardeners 
a lot of times if you're going to do like a second planting for fall it's like well where do i do that my stuff that's in my garden is still producing and a lot of times you have to go ahead and tear plants out that are on the decline to put something in to get a second wave it's kind of beautiful because if you deal with disease these uh, squash they're really just struggling with the way we've been getting a lot of rain you know the tomatoes have really been struggling with the heat see all that curl some things look amazing um, I noticed powdery mildew on the melons cucumbers are starting to peter out but that's normal I mean they usually this is about as late as I've ever had cucumbers they they really struggle in the heat so that's pretty normal they're about ready to come out oh Will's I don't know what this is I think somebody gave this one to you. Oh. I don't remember. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's pretty. That's a healthy plant. Yeah. This one? I have itchy ankles. But yeah, this is probably ready. That little spindle on there. Yeah. I would say that's probably ready. I have definitely got it wrong on watermelons plenty of times, but yeah, those tendrils by the edges drying yeah. up is usually a pretty good sign and you can usually hear it when they sound kind of full of juice yeah. you got your knife you want to cut that one i picked one the other day the odell's thinking that it was done those sugar babies oh something's eating this uh oh yeah several of the melons over here got messed with y'all see this tall Montesino squash hey will did you see this look hold on okay so here's the thing of course we got some little runaways here but from there okay all the way it snakes through and I got squash. This is coming all the way down into the other squash bed. I just, at this point, may the odds be ever in your favor. I just feel like when a plant is so tenacious, it yeah. deserves the garden. Yeah, we need to save those seeds. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's hard because sometimes you have to take things that are producing out in order to put things that will produce later in and it's really just about knowing and it is hard at the beginning but like knowing what the decline looks like so when you start seeing disease and you have the opportunity to succession so i'm pretty ruthless like we pull it out so this garden we're actually going to pull quite a lot out the squash is going to come out the cucumber is going to come out not the trauma and i'll leave that because it's still like spreading and producing probably leave the armenians because they're still setting flowers and producing and they don't look sick I'll probably give some of these melons a little more time, but they're starting to get powdery mildew with all the rain. And I am, I'm debating on the tomatoes. Some of these tomato plants may come out. I don't know. Some of them still have enough fruit on. It's probably worth leaving. Mmm, that sure tastes good. These plants are so stressed out from the heat. Stressed tomato plants make the tastiest tomatoes. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, I'm going to lay the camera down for a little while. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.